Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Dustin Crace, and today we're going to do the April pickups. Uh, picked up a lot of games this month. Uh, just decided to go out and kind of pick up a lot of the uh, the cheap PS3, Xbox 360 games before things started getting really hard to find. I know, like, if you go out to GameStop nowadays, it just seems like their selection is absolutely terrible and you can't find anything. So, I wanted to get what I could before things started getting really dire. Um... Also, uh, this is not everything. I have two packages coming from Japan, but uh, with the way customs has been the last couple times I've ordered from Japan, I'm almost convinced that I'm on a terror watch list somewhere um, <laughs> because it just seems like things get hung up and usually uh, shipments from Japan are really quick, but now things are just getting a little, little crazy with the wait. Um, what else? Oh. If you are waiting on the PAX East video where I talk about the games I saw and sort of the experience of PAX, um, if you really care about that, I'm going to go ahead and direct you to episode 20 of another gaming podcast. Because we did the podcast and I basically talked about everything that I was going to talk about in the video anyway. And then when it came time to make the video, I just didn't care anymore. Um, <clears throat> I had zero ambition to do it. And because, you know, it feels like I've already done it. So. Um, we're now on iTunes. If you didn't know that, Another Gaming Podcast is on iTunes. You can just go search for us, Another Gaming Podcast, and you'll see the beautiful logo that was designed for us by Chance's wife, Whitney. <clears throat> and, uh, we have all the episodes up there now, except for maybe a new one that might be recorded, you know, sometime this week. Uh, but yeah, episode 20, where we have Crack Lotus on there, um, I talk at great length way too long <laughs> about the PAX experience. So I would uh, recommend you guys go check that out because I just, I'm not going to do the video. Um, I just have no ambition to do it. So anyway, <clears throat> before I'm starting to lose my voice now, great. Um, let's go ahead and get into these and talk about some of the things that uh, I picked up. Like I said, I've been kind of going around. Uh, GameStop has just been getting really bad to shop in. Like you just can't find anything there anymore unless it's new um, or just, you know, kind of newly released I guess but uh, went out to the local <clears throat> the local store here that uh, Steven and I went to when he came here and I found one of these bad boys and everyone talks about the R4 but I've never heard of the ace card 2i before but they had one of these there and it didn't have an SD card in it and I was just kind of you know quickly looked up on my phone uh, what was all about you know the reviews were good and stuff and you know it seemed to be a pretty competent flash card um, so I asked the guy, you know, how much it is, and he's like, well, <clears throat> I don't have any micro SD cards for it, and, you know, there's no way to really test it out, so I don't know if it works or not, but how about three bucks? And I was like, sure, I'll gamble on it for three bucks. I've, you know, bought cups of coffee that cost more than this. So I bought it, brought it home, got a micro SD card, loaded up, uh, the one DS game I have, which is the patched version of Soma Bringer, and nothing, nothing. So I was kind of talking about it with uh, some other people. And Mike, Aerodynamish, said, Hey, do you have the firmware on your SD card? And I guess I, I figured that the, the firmware would just be built into the card. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, so he directed me to where I could get the firmware, uh, installed that on the SD card, and sure enough, it works. So now I can play Summerbringer. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing Summerbringer sometime uh, this year. And if you guys, if there's... Because with the DS, I kind of, if it didn't get released over here, um, for the most part, I kind of just ignored <laughs> the Japanese releases because the language barrier and, um, you know, I, I can't read Japanese. So if you guys know of any really good, um, you know, Japanese games that have been fan translated or whatever that I can download and install in this, you know, leave me a comment and let me know. Because that's a whole new world has opened up for me now. Uh, but as far as the games go, uh, picked up a lot of stuff here. Let's go ahead and get into it. I picked up Metal Slug Double X on the PSP. Um, I, did I order this? I think I might have ordered this because I, I played a little bit of Metal Slug on my PS2 and I was like, oh my god, I forgot how much I love this series and then I remembered I didn't have this one yet. So I went out and picked it up and, um, yeah, you know, you gotta support Metal Slug. It's... Probably, you know, out of the SNK games, it's probably my favorite SNK series. So I got that. And to go along with that, I also picked up the Metal Slug Anthology for the Wii. I have it for the PlayStation 2, 
but I kind of want to play these games out on my big, you know, uh, big screen TV out there. I don't, I don't know how much it'll blow out the, the graphics or anything, but I uh, had to pick this up. <clears throat> I actually uh, bought this disc only at a, a GameStop, and then I had to go to um, BRE to get the, um, the artwork and the manual. So I was able to complete a copy of it. Because I just don't see this anywhere nowadays. I don't know if it just got rare all of a sudden, if everyone's picking it up for some reason, but just never can find this anywhere. Um, so, uh, had to get that. Um, <clears throat> another thing, retro-ish, that uh, I can't find anywhere, and I don't know, like, Volume 1, you can just walk outside and trip over it. Uh, but Volume 2 just doesn't seem to be anywhere. And at Coin Mart, which is the store I got the, the uh, Ace card at, I found this. Capcom's Classic Collection Volume 2. And uh, I've been looking for this for a while because it's an easy way to sort of get a lot of these really old great games. You know, like 1941. Um, what else? Like Knights of the Rounds, King of Dragons. Uh, you know, wait, it's got the original Street Fighter on it. That's kind of cool. You know, <clears throat> uh, original arcade port of Strider. So, I mean, these classic Capcom collections are easy uh, ways to uh, get a hold of all these old great games. So, it's going to be kind of fun uh, to see exactly what all is on here. I don't think this is a list of all the games, but it says it only has 20 games on it. So, I guess we'll see what's on there. But, yeah, I've been looking for this for a while and just can't find it anywhere. So, finally found it and picked it up. And it's actually, you know, complete and in pretty good condition. So, I had to swap the case out, but that's not a big deal. <clears throat> my throat's closing up great um as far as new releases go uh picked up two vita games the vita is actually starting to come into its own i'm really starting to enjoy the vita picked up conception 2 and as you can see this is still sealed because uh i'm not getting around the planet anytime soon um so i'm just gonna keep it sealed until i do but um you know it, it's hard for me to pass up an rpg series that gets released um it, it, especially on the handheld systems. It's really hard for me just to not pick those up. So, you know, I've looked into it, and I think I'll enjoy this, but I'm not really uh, too sure. But um, it, it's hard for me not to support, you know, especially Atlas, who went through such a um, such a weird time with, you know, uh, their parent company going bankrupt and stuff. So i uh, got to, you know, support these RPG series so companies still release them over here in the States. And then from the NIS online store, <clears throat> picked this up, which is the Demon Gaze uh, Collector's Edition, and it comes with the game itself. <sighs> Can't pick things up. An official soundtrack with 11 songs on it, and then this Mercenaries Guide, which is kind of like an art book um, type thing. And uh, <laughs> if you like first-person dungeon crawlers... Oh my god, my sinuses are going crazy. This is going to be a terrible video. If you like uh, dungeon crawlers and anime boobies, uh, this is the game for you. And I've only kind of started it and kind of getting through the introductory period, but uh, I'm enjoying it so far. So Chance, uh, since you just got a Vita here not too long ago, definitely look into this for your first person dungeon crawling. <sighs> Trying to make this through this before my entire face just collapses in on itself. Um... There was a few uh, really good games at uh, the old GameStop. I, I took advantage of the buy two, get one free, and picked up three games that I've kind of had my eye on for a while. And finally, you know, with the deal, the prices were just right. So I picked up Asura's Wrath, which Steven just played and really liked. Picked up Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which everyone seemed to have a good time with. And Dragon's Dogma, which I don't really know too much about, but... Um, Looking forward to uh, seeing what this is all about. I think it's Capcom's attempt at making a Western RPG, so that should be kind of interesting. So we'll see. <clears throat> also, uh, I've been scouring for this, um, and the prices on this have just soared. So if you guys see this out for you know low prices, definitely pick it up, because online, you're going to be paying upwards of $30 for that, and that, that is near. Um, I remember when this was like $8, like GameStop was just trying to give them away, you know? And now all of a sudden, I don't know if the, uh, the PS3 version is rarer than the 360 version, but, um, it's getting hard to get your hands on this game. And I've already played it, I have it on the 360, but, um, I, I kind of want the PS3 copy and 
maybe, uh, maybe, maybe those Japanese packages, um, you know, might have something to do with this as well. But um, yeah, I had to get this for the the PS3. Um, if I replay it, you know, I'm probably gonna, you know, replay it on the PS3 uh, just to re-experience everything. But uh, I love Nier. I love the soundtrack. I love the story. Um, it's too bad that Caviar, who made the game, uh, went bankrupt after this because. They made some pretty interesting stuff. I think I heard that the studio kind of reunited to make Drakengard 3, but uh, at least personnel from the studio. They're not calling themselves Caviar anymore. But, um, yeah, it's just near. It's one of those games I just can't get away from. Uh, picked this up because I really enjoyed the third game in the series, and that is Infamous 2. I uh, played Second Son. I love it. I have Infamous 1. Uh, I had to find this online because games. apparently this game is not carried by GameStop anymore. Um, their use section is just abysmal. So I had to go to Amazon and uh, order this through their Amazon warehouse. And it's in really good condition. Um, I've only gotten burned by Amazon warehouse deals once. But uh, yeah, I had to pick that up because I, I plan on playing them sometime. Uh, picked this up because we are planning on doing a AGP game night with this sometime. At least Steven wants to. And it's six bucks, and I found it at GameStop, but it was in terrible, terrible condition. I had to really work to get this case cleaned up, and that's Blazing Angels, uh, Squadrons of World War II. And he says it reminds him a lot of, um, oh, what was that game called? Crimson Skies? Yeah, I think Crimson Skies on the, X almost at the Xbox One, on the original Xbox. God, they made it so difficult. Um, so, you know, I kind of like these arcadey type flight games and I like World War II so this is you know kind of up um, up my alley so you know maybe uh, when we announce the next AGP game night although it says uh, Steven I don't think you looked on the back of here because it says no 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 I correct myself before I even say it online 16 players so that'd be great for an AGP game night because when a lot of people show up um, although not a lot of people would probably show up for this um, then uh, you know, I kind of talk about a lot how I don't play my 360 anymore. And I've been playing Lost Odyssey and really having a good time with it. And I don't know, I just went out and found a lot of really cheap 360 games. Although one, again, I had to look online for because apparently this game just doesn't exist out in the wild anymore. And it's not a very good game. And, I, you know, I don't think, uh, I don't know. I don't know how, what, what to really say about it, but I did pick up Bullet Witch. And I know, I've read about this game quite extensively, and I know that this is not a good game. But at the same time, it's such a weird, like, quirky title. And it is made by Cavia, who does Nier. So, I, I, I have to give it a shot. And even if it's a terrible, as the reviews say, um, you know, it wasn't that expensive. And it's kind of an interesting curiosity piece, I guess. But, you know, if you go by the reviews, and you read reviews... Um, and you take reviews at their word, um, I should have hated Deadly Premonition, I should have hated Nier, and I should have absolutely loved Dark Souls 2. And in all three cases, it was the exact opposite. So, you know, reviews are kind of a guide, but until you put the game in yourself and play it, um, you don't really know. So, who knows, maybe I'll love Bullet Witch, I don't know. I don't know what I'm ever going to get to it, but uh, it's just kind of a weird, quirky title that I wanted to get in my collection. I uh, picked this up today at that same store. Unfortunately, it is not complete, but the price, you know, for $7, um, this game's kind of getting pricey, too, and that's Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. Um, right? That's the first... Yeah, this is the first one. The other one was... No. This is the sequel. Fuck. This is the sequel. Shit. Well, that's not very good. Because uh, the original one was Earth Defense Force 2017, was it? Wasn't it? Or was it Insect Armageddon was the first one? I can't remember. But anyway, it was $7. I don't really care either way. It's missing the manual. But um, Earth Defense Force, yay! Uh, but I think this is the sequel, and I think 2017 is the first one. All new Earth Defense Force adventure. Yes, this is the sequel. Shit. Oh, well. It was cheap. <laughs> what are you going to do? Um... Then I, I've been wanting to get this series as well, and I can't find the first game again. I'm going to have to resort to online. But I did find the sequel, and that is 99 Nights 2. Um, again, this is just kind of a weird, you know, 360. I don't know if this one was exclusive to the 360. I think the first one was. 
but uh, one of those weird sort of titles that uh, I don't know. I just wanted my collection. I have a friend of mine who really enjoys these games, so maybe I will too. And it was really cheap, so just kind of I don't know. Just kind of picking up these kind of weird cheap games. Uh, pick this up, even though I haven't played the first one. But again, it was like next to nothing. Dragon Age Two, and uh, Alex from Return to Mother Base told me it's like playing a Saturday morning cartoon version of Dragon Age. So um, I, I was talking to him about how long these games take, and uh, you know I might throw Dragon Age One in sometime here soon. But um, picked up this because it was literally next to nothing. They're practically giving it to me. Um, this one was a little bit more expensive, but um, it is, as far as I can tell, complete. And it does have the CD soundtrack with it. And that is Div Divinity 2, The Dragon Knight Saga. And there you go, the soundtrack and the manual. And this game kind of had an interesting history where it was released once and it was like really, really, really bad. And then somehow Atlas got a hold of it and tightened the game up somehow and re-released it. And it's supposed to be like a lot better. So um, it's going to be interesting to put this in and kind of see what it's all about. I'm assuming it's going to be kind of like a, a Fable-esque, you know, Knights of Amalur type, you know, Western RPG, hack and slash type thing. But I guess we'll see when I actually get into it. Two full adventures, totaling over 100 hours of exciting gameplay. How can you turn that down? I don't But it was, um, I think this was like $14. So I, I, I just felt like, you know, spending money one day. I don't know. And then I picked this up because um, kind of in a little bit of a PAX story here. Uh, I played the uh, the new game from the series um, and really, really enjoyed it. Really had a good time with it. So I wanted to go back and play another game in the series, and that is Wolfenstein. And like I said, I, you know, I don't know if this is good or not, um, you know, it, but something about that alternate World War II and like killing these robotic uh, Nazis, I, I absolutely just had a blast doing that at PAX. So uh had to pick this up. It was next to nothing like th you know everyone complains about game prices these days but man there's so many games out there that you can buy for less than the price of like a hamburger it's ridiculous um and that is it for the games that's all i picked up in the games which is way too much um but you just go into these places and you see these 360 and ps3 titles for just peanuts and you're like all right i'll get it whatever um and they're all stuff i want to play so you can't beat that um, as far as music, well, really there's no music, um, but what there is is a Louis C.K. Hilarious CD. I've been looking for his albums because I just think he's one of the funniest uh, comics out there right now. And I uh, picked this up and listened to it and just laughed hysterically. And there was actually a really good uh, quote in there that I put on my Facebook about, um, he says this really awful joke. And he's like, I just want you all to know I'm just saying this because for my own enjoyment because it makes you guys upset. I'm saying it because I'm enjoying you being upset, and that's kind of how I am too. Like I say these awful things sometimes, but it's just to see the look on people's faces uh, when I say these terrible, awful things. Um, picked this up because I wanted my girlfriend to watch it, and at the same time, um, this is something that my brother and I would watch just as kids and just howl and almost vomit from laughter. Bill Cosby himself and. I dare you to watch this and not laugh, uh, because this is probably one of the funniest things, consistently funny things throughout the years, um, out there, you know, uh, you know, I watched this as a little kid and even as an adult watching this, uh, movie for, I don't know, maybe like 24 years. I don't know when the first time I saw it was, uh, it still makes me laugh. Um, it's just hilarious stuff and very true to what life is because um, I'm, I'm dating a girl who has a four-year-old and the stuff in here about parenting um, even though this thing is 30 years old it was released in 82 um, it's still it's just it's still relevant to today so really good stuff Bill Cosby himself and then on the blu-ray front I did pick up The Hobbit Desolation of Smog uh, I enjoyed it but at the same time um, there's a certain magic to going to Middle Earth again, but at the same time, these just don't have the same magic with me that the Lord of the Rings movies had. And I think it's because of its over-reliance on CG technology. Um, everything just kind of looks fake, and it kind of draws you out of the movie a little bit. I mean, there's no absolutely no reason why the orcs 
have to be CG in this. Um, the orc makeup in War of the Rings looked totally fine, and it looked much more realistic than the orcs in this. But, um, you know, it's fun to go back to Middle-earth. Um, I always said I kind of hope they make a Cimmerillion movie, but I really hope that somebody else does it and not Peter Jackson, because as good as the Lord of the Rings movies are, these ones are kind of starting to lose a little bit of the magic for me. And I'd almost like to see somebody else, especially, you know, in light of Guillermo del Toro should have been the one directing this. I would have much rather seen the Guillermo del Toro version um, than Peter Jackson, but that's just me. I'm sure, I'm sure someone will disagree with that. Um, <clears throat> picked this up because it was next to nothing, and, uh, yeah, it's Waterworld. And I picked this up because, fuck you, I like Waterworld. <laughs> I actually really enjoy Waterworld. It's kind of a mess of a movie. But at the same time, um, I kind of like these, uh, not-so-great movies. Uh, I blame Mystery Science Theater 3000, I don't know. But, uh, we were talking about this on the way up to PAX, and I was like, you know... I really need to own Waterworld. And then I went to FYE and I saw the Blu-ray for $10 and I was like, fuck it, I'm getting it. And um, I haven't watched it yet, but uh, when I do, I'm, I'm definitely going to have a good time with it. I don't know. I just I enjoy Waterworld. Watching Kevin Costner drink his own urine, it's a good time. Um, and then finally, this film just came out um, last week. And uh, I pre-ordered it on Amazon as soon as I saw the uh, the pre-order go up because I've actually really wanted to see this movie for a while and that is The Pawn Broker and this is the first American film to deal with the Holocaust and you know this film is um, was it like 50, let's see 65 so it'll be it's 48 years old is that right? yeah um, I'm quickly doing the math in my head to make sure that's right yeah um, anyway uh, first film to deal with the Holocaust, American film to deal with the Holocaust, and even today, after all that time has passed, this is still a hard movie to take in. Just the the it's it's all about spiritual death, and what would you, how would you react to the world after that atrocity, you know, was uh, put upon you? And um, it's just, I mean, if you like these type of films that delve into like the human psyche. And uh, make you think about how you'd react. I mean, this, this is not a like war, this is not a war film, and it's not a big action film or anything like that. But it's one of those films that you watch and you think about. This thing is a barn burner, and uh, I'm so glad I picked up the Blu-ray of this. It's so I wish there were some bonus features on here talking about the uh, the making of the film, but uh, it's just the, it's just the film itself. But uh, that is enough. Because this is an absolutely excellent movie. And if you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. And then finally, the last thing I picked up, I uh, went to FYE one day and saw this in here. And I've actually been kind of looking for these um, every now and then. But I did pick up the Art Asylum Enterprise B. And, uh, you know, as good as Art Asylum... Like, Art Asylum doing these ships is a lot better than Playmates. Playmates just slaps the damn things together, and they don't even really look like the ships from the show. Art Asylum has a great attention to detail. The only problem is, um, is the construction. There's a lot of flashing on the plastic. Um, there's a lot of seams that don't go completely together. But all in all, um, this is a very well-detailed ship. Like, it's, I mean, it's got details on it that, you know, most companies wouldn't even bother to put on. Like the Aztecing on the, um, the saucer section, just the, I mean, just the overall attention to detail that goes into these things. And they do light up and make noise. But it does the weird thing that I don't like about these ships, is that um, it has the people talking. I'd much rather the ships just make the torpedo noises, the warp engines, and, you know, just the various noises that the ship makes. I don't need... Captain, I'd be honored if you'd give the order to get underway. I don't need John Harriman, you know, telling Captain Kirk to, to let the ship go out. But, um, yeah, I, I, I really like the detailing on the ship. Uh, I really like the Excelsior class, and I like the Excelsior refit especially. So, um, as far as I can you know, tell, this is a very, very good um, representation of the ship. And it actually makes me want to go out and buy some more of the Art Asylum ships. Uh, I have an Art Asylum Enterprise A, and I really love that thing. But uh, the build quality on that, or not the build quality, but just the construction quality, 
the attention to it is a lot better than this. There's a lot of flashing. Like, I don't know if it'll pick up, but there's a seam gap there. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's still sturdy. It's still held together. But um, I love buying, I love Star Trek, and I love the ships of Star Trek. And so, had to pick that up. But anyway, that is it. Oh, glad I got through that. And now I'm going to spend the next five minutes putting all this on the shelf. So, um, anyway, like I said, if you're waiting on the PAX East uh, game video, just go watch episode 20 of another gaming podcast. If you haven't given us a shot yet, um, we're on iTunes now. So it's a lot easier for you guys to kind of digest us <laughs> at your own leisure uh, as opposed to just sitting in front of the YouTube screen. Um, but other than that, yeah, i uh, got some other packages coming in. I'll be rounding out... Uh, Lost Odyssey tonight, hopefully. Maybe not tonight. Maybe sometime this week, Lost Odyssey will be done. Um, and then we'll do a game discussion on it. And then I have a kind of a big project video that I'm working on in the background. And, uh, that'll be up whenever I get the legwork done on it. I'm much more excited about doing that video, uh, than doing the PAX East video. So, anyway, that is it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time.